What's up, guys? Uh, this is Stan Mitchell. Um, I had hinted on my blog um, a couple days ago that I was going to start a series called My Time in the Corps. Corps standing for Marine Corps, obviously the flag behind me. Um, and this series is going to be a bunch of episodes, probably 15 or 20, something like that. I've started mapping out a list of them. Uh, and I'm hoping that there'll be quick stories that uh, of some that that happened to me, but that have some life lessons and uh, that apply to both, you know, the Marine Corps and life. Uh, I got a couple note cards. I want to make sure I don't forget anything. The three main reasons I wanted to do this was uh, I'm constantly asked about what it was like to be in the Marine Corps by my friends, and you know, I figure a lot of people want to know what it's like in the real world in the Marine Corps versus what you see on the movies. Uh, a lot of what you see on the movies is completely false. And so after thinking about this for a while, I've decided, you know what, I'll share this. Uh, second reason is I want to preserve my memories. Uh, you know, it was 20 years ago uh, since I joined. I joined in 1995, served on active duty until 1999. And then got out for a couple of years, went back into the reserves after 9 11 in 2001, and stayed in the reserves until 2003. So, you know, as I talk to my buddies, and also times it's amazing how much you forget and how fast you forget it. So, I wanted to preserve what I've actually can remember now. And, uh, you know, maybe someday I'll show it to my kids or something. Um, and the final thing is I want to honor those I served with. Um, and also show how the Marine Corps was in the late 90s. Um, there wasn't, there weren't any wars going on and there wasn't much combat. We saw just a tad, and I'll explain that in a later episode. But the very Marines that were there are some who ended up, some of my buddies ended up going to Iraq and Afghanistan. And certainly some of the people that we trained, their Marines ended up going. So it's a picture of what the Marine Corps was like when our country was at peace. And, um, and I think they're, interesting fun stories so okay so the first episode I'm gonna call uh, beginnings checking into my new unit and facing my toughest adversary this is a uh, quite a story and it's one of the most memorable days of my life actually um, for those who don't know when you join the Marine Corps you uh, you have to show up in your dress uniform and something called uh, service a uniform uh, they're uh, dark green, they're awkward, not fun to wear, um, and almost no one wears them. On base, everyone wears camis. So if you see someone wearing these alphas, these dark green uniforms, you know they're checking in, almost always. Um, so there were about 15 or 20 of us that day, and we uh, we show up. I don't know many people, you know, and uh, didn't know most of the guys with me. So we're all in these alphas, 15 or 20 of us. And there's a sergeant who's marching us to the company headquarters. And we walk through this uh, open area uh, where, uh, I think they call it a quad back then, but uh, it's this open area and there's three barracks that form a U-shape. And then the company headquarters was off just a tad to the side. And so we all march in and uh, each of these barracks are like three stories high. And there are all these Marines just screaming at us, threatening us, cursing us calling us boots in the Marine Corps, boot is a new Marine, and they're just all just screaming, they're going to kick our, you know what, they're going to, you know, it's, it was uh, a little intimidating, so we march into the company headquarters, and I don't remember a lot about the early part of the day, it's the latter part that I'll tell you about in a second, but I find out pretty quickly that I'll be going to 3rd Platoon, Alpha Company, and so everywhere I would go, uh, I would ask these guys in admin, various places we had to go to fill out paperwork and get gear and I don't even I don't remember much about the day but I would constantly ask people hey what's third platoon like you know like this is going to be my home for the next four years so I wanted to know what was third platoon like and everywhere I went they kept telling me about this guy named Smith now Smith is not his name but I'm not going to use anyone's real name in any of these videos or blog posts so we'll just call him Smith from Kansas uh, so they would they would uh, tell me that uh uh, man, 3rd Platoon is a good platoon, but you got to watch out for this guy named Smith. I'm like, Smith? And, uh, and I'd hear all these stories. Everywhere I went, I would ask about 3rd Platoon. Everyone always brought uh, Smith up. 
and it turned out that Smith had been in this big fight in um, the last deployment, and he really hurt this guy and had used uh, um, a, a piece of an iron piece of metal on him, put him in the hospital. Uh, he drank a lot. He loved to fight and argue, and everyone was like, "Don't mess with him." Turned out he was also a, a lefty. Uh, if you know much about fighting, fighting someone who's left-handed is very difficult. You're not used to uh, uh, how they how they fight, how they stand. Their stance is switched up usually. Sometimes it's not, which is even trickier. But uh, so he was a lefty, and he was also a, a state champ uh, wrestler from his state, which we'll say is Kansas. It wasn't, but if you don't know anything about fighting wrestlers, wrestlers are incredible fighters. Um, and you do not want to fight someone who's been a wrestler for two or three years in high school. And you definitely don't want to fight someone who was a state champ in, in high school. Uh, so I knew quite a bit of martial arts, but I also knew that you don't want to mess with a wrestler. So those were the things I heard about Smith. I go through the day. I'm nervous. I'm like, I just got to avoid this guy, you know. People are still yelling at us when they see us. But uh, So it gets to the end of the day. I get my room key. I'm told the number. And you know where this is going. My number is the room number that Smith is in. Um, I show up, it's sometime after 5 o'clock or 1700 in the Marine Corps, and I walk in, and as if that isn't bad enough to have to see Smith, uh, there's an audience there. There's like six or eight guys there, maybe ten. And I'm like so nervous, and I've got all my gear, and I'm in this stupid dress uniform, which you can't even lift your arms out on. Um, and I'm standing there in the door. And all these guys just look around. They're all drinking, you know, getting ready to go out. I think it's a Friday night. And uh, I'm like, at that time, I was 5'5", uh, five, five, and I weighed about a, uh, I weighed 123 pounds. And I know this because in boot camp, uh, before I went in, I weighed 118 pounds. And I was so proud that when I got out, I weighed 123 pounds. Um, I had gained five pounds of muscle, and I was just proud that, you know, I was a little bigger. I hated being small. So I'm this little guy standing in the doorway and all these guys are just already, uh, just, you know, welcome aboard. We're going to kick your, you know what? And they're just saying all this. And so I meet, the, <laughs> I drag all my stuff in. They tell me I got the top bunk, which I figured I would, you know, I expected that I'm the new guy. And, uh, so I throw my gear up there and I get to meet the Smith guy. He's wearing like a pair of shorts, no t-shirt, drinking a beer and a pair of flip-flops. Uh, he'd gotten out of his camis for the day, I assume, and uh, they were going to be going out that night drinking, big-time drinking, but as you know, in the Marine Corps, before you go drinking, you drink beforehand uh, to save yourself a lot of money. So these guys would basically almost get drunk before they would even leave, and that's what he was in the process of doing, as were the others in the room. And um, so Smith, um, you know, rags me a little bit, but he reaches in his fridge and uh, grabs a beer. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting to tell you anything. Okay, so Smith hands me the beer, and he says, you know, welcome to 3rd Platoon. Um, have a beer. Well, there's one problem. I don't drink. Um, growing up, there was someone that I knew, an adult, a man who um, had... Uh, uh, become an alcoholic, unfortunately, and uh, it cost him his family and eventually his life. And so this really impacted me as a kid. And I was I was scared of alcohol then. I'm still halfway scared of alcohol. Still don't drink. So I'm in the room. My first night, Smith hands me a beer, and he says, "Have a beer." And so I say, "I'm sorry, I don't drink." And he says, um, "I'll make sure I don't forget any of this good stuff." He said, "Well, you know." from Kansas, not that it's Kansas, but we'll pretend that's the state. He said, in Kansas, if someone offers you a beer and you don't take it, it's an insult. So unless you're wanting to insult me, here's, have a beer. And all these people are just like, yeah, 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 drink the beer. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't drink. You know, and he, he's, he said, you know, everyone drinks in the Marine Corps. I think I've missed that little part. But uh, I said, I'm sorry, I don't drink. And by then, everyone's just very frustrated that, uh, that, you know, I, I guess that I'm even somewhat standing up to this guy, but um, I'm really scared of him. He's about 5'10", 185 pounds. He's lean. He's built. I know this guy can clobber me. There's no doubt. I mean, I'm a pretty good fighter, but this guy, there's no doubt. And so, um, so I'm sorry I don't drink. And so then he kind of goes into the threatening part, and he tells me that, you know, that uh, if I don't drink it, it's an insult, and that 
you know, I better drink it before he gets out of the shower. And he starts toward the shower. Well, the beer's laying on the bed next to me. It's in a bottle. And I'm just, I don't know what to do, but I just grab the, the beer, the bottle, and I walk it over to the fridge, and I just put it in as, like, respectfully and tactfully as I can. And as I do that, all these people just, like, oh, Smith, you're not going to let him do that. Look at the little boot. He's putting your beer up. Smith comes out of the out of the bathroom, turns, comes out, and he's like, he grabs the beer out. I had already sat back down on his on his bed where he had asked me to sit. And he puts the hands of beer back out. I won't take it. And he lays it by me. And he says, you know, Stan, I'm going to take a shower. You're going to drink that beer. Or you can pour it down the drain. I don't care. But it's an insult to be offered a beer and not take it. So when I get out of the shower, you that bottle better be empty and set on the sink. And all these guys are, you know, egging, egging him on. And he turns and walks back toward the shower. And the whole time, I am, like, so scared. But I had been bullied a ton in high school. I had uh, literally had someone take my lunch money during uh, gym class when I was changing once. It was a drug dealer. The guy carried a gun. I had someone once throw my backpack off the fourth floor of the high school. So all my high school years, I was constantly bullied or, or scared of being bullied. I wasn't bullied as much as some people because I did learn to fight well and I, I did uh, I lifted a lot, took martial arts, but I was still bullied. I was still scared. And I had gone to the Marine Corps thinking I will never be bullied again. I'm going to be this you know, tough, badass Marine. It will never happen again. And on my first day in a new unit, I'm being bullied. And I don't know why, but for some reason it just clicked and I'm just like, this is not going to happen. And so as he's walking to the shower, in his, uh, in his shower shoes and his shorts, I say, Smith, there's no point in taking a shower because after you get out, you're going to have to take another one. And I say it as respectfully as possible. I'm not even sure I met his eyes. I might have been down just a tad. I was absolutely scared, but I was absolutely not going to be bullied. And of course, the whole room is just like, you know, just screaming because I had just said this to this guy. And he walks up to me, and I'm sitting down because I don't have the nerve to stand and meet him. And he kind of bends down. He's just looking at me. And I'm thinking he's going to punch me, or I, I don't know what's going to happen. But I had already decided that I wasn't going to be bullied, and I would fight him as long as I could all through the night, into the next day. It didn't matter, but I would not be bullied. And he says, you know what? You're lucky we're leaving soon. And so he grabs a beer and puts it in the fridge, and that kind of relieves the situation. The people kind of leave the room, and I, you know, quickly change into civilian clothes. And basically, because I'm scared out of my mind for when he'll get out of the shower, I go get dinner at like a Burger King or something and stay away for a couple of hours. So that was my first night of checking into Alpha Company. And he tells me before he leaves, of course, his taunting um, isn't going to stop. But uh, he did say before he got in the shower that... Uh, We'll talk about this when I get back. So that night, when I came back to my room, the whole night I'm laying in bed, I'm thinking, this guy's going to come back at like 2 in the morning, and he's going to kick the crap out of me. And he did at about 2 in the morning come back, but he was drunk. He threatened me. I wouldn't get out of the bed, and he basically just passed out. Um, and we'll talk about what happened in the next episode after I left the room as well. There's another important part of the story. But So that's the night I met Smith. Um... So how's the story end? In the days and weeks that followed, he keep taunting me. Um, I would never try to embarrass the guy because I was scared of him. I would I would kind of stand up to him, but I would never like stare him in the face and put my hand. I would always just hold my ground, but I would not do anything to antagonize the guy. And I would tell a few Marines, a few younger of the boots that were put in, I'm like, I know he can, he will absolutely kill me and crush me in a fight, but if he pisses me off too bad or hurts me too bad. I will take an e-tool and, you know, slam it in his face in the middle of the night. And I know that got back to him. And I, I, I was only probably half kidding, but I probably did halfway mean it because I, I was, I think I was to the point I would not be bullied. And uh, I'm sure he later heard about it. And I'm sure he thought, man, I'm sleeping with this crazy little dude from Tennessee that I need to be careful about. And eventually we ended up, I won't say we become friends, but we were decent roommates. And, um, you know, it, it ended up working out. Um, so, to the lessons learned, um, there's a few things. I want to make sure I don't forget any things. 
that I learned from this. One, you got to stand up for yourself. It, you know, it, you'll gain respect by standing up for yourself. I eventually gained a lot of respect from that, I think. And it'll also stop the harassment. After two or three months, the guy didn't mess with me anymore. He was already messing with someone else. Um, the second thing is you got to embrace your situation no matter how bad your life is. When I look back, like uh, all that bullying in high school actually helped me. Me lifting weights, me saying, I'm going to join the Marine Corps and get out of this situation, me taking martial arts. Those two things helped me in the Marine Corps a ton to eventually get um, Marine of the Quarter for the entire 2nd Marine Division. Also, um, uh, I earned the rank of sergeant within four years in the infantry, which is not easy to do, or it wasn't back then. Um, and then the final thing is don't be afraid to be different on the drinking thing. Uh, for two or three months, you know, everyone would be trying to get me to drink a beer, peer pressure, you know, trying to twist my arm a little bit. But the funny thing is, is after a couple of months or so, and after they learned that I could fight pretty well, uh, I was like the most popular guy in the company because I was like the only guy who didn't drink. Uh, I just didn't give in to peer pressure. I was like the only guy who didn't get a tattoo because I wanted to go force recon someday and maybe the CIA and I knew tattoos were bad. So every other infantry guy gets tattoos, multiple ones usually. I was the guy who didn't get tattoos. I was the guy who didn't drink, but I become super popular for that because everyone wanted a designated driver. And I became known as this guy who would get you there safely, keep you out of a fight or get you out of a fight where I was sober. I could fight really well. And in bars, every other Marine there's drunk. So if you even are halfway, you know, um, if you have your wits about you, 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 you look like you're some UFC MMA professional fighter. Um, it's just because you haven't been drinking. But I've become super popular for that. And then I also want to say a couple other things in defense of Smith. Um, one, he probably doesn't even remember this night at all. Um, because in, when you're a uh, veteran Marine, this is just what you do. Uh, I'm sure I was one of a dozen or two dozen boots or new Marines boots is what they're called. But I'm, I was probably one or two dozen uh, new Marines that, uh, that he threatened and saw how far he pushed. And the crazy thing is, is when he left, I did the same thing he did. Uh, and as I think about that 20 years later, I mean, I didn't try to make anyone drink a beer, but I tested dudes. I would taunt them. I would threaten them because when they're new, they have to know their place. They have to know they got to listen. But you also, you want to test their mettle. You want to know if, hey, is this guy a coward or will he stand up to you? Is there something there? And, um, you know, the Marine Corps is, uh, this is life or death stuff. You got to know if the guy who just got assigned to your unit and you're on air alert, is that guy actually going to, you know, do what's got to be done if you're in a firefight in two days? Um, so I did the same thing. Um, I can't even say looking back if, whether it's right or wrong, it's just the way it is. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I, d I do think that, uh, it applies to the civilian world though, because, um, I think even in your job, especially if you're new, people judge you from the first day you walk in, how you dress. Did you show up on time? When, when are you demanding or asking for your next vacation? If you've got um, open shift on a Friday night or weekend or you're told to work, then how do you react? People are constantly judging you. Uh, so I think the, uh, I think if you're falling a little short and you're not dressing as you should, you know, or you're not, you've got a bad attitude. Um, if you're like me, it's hard to let go of the past. You feel bad about it, but you got to let it go and you got to resolve to do better. And I think if you do that, you will, uh, go far in life. You'll, you'll, um, possibly get that pay raise, possibly get that promotion, possibly say, you know, I deserve better than this. Instead of being like everyone else, I'm going to go get a better job. So um, I think asking how you measure up is important. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'll put part two up in a few days. Um, and obviously, don't forget to check out my books. Thanks, guys.